Good evening. It's time for our prayer meeting, prayer time, and Bible devotions. And uh, I trust that you're willing to take a few minutes in prayer and remember not only your own self and family, but the church family and uh, friends and loved ones, our country, our leadership, our governor, our president, uh, those throughout the world that are facing the pandemic as well, and that uh, God would move and work in such a manner that lives would be touched for Jesus Christ. Well, let's take a moment in prayer, and you pray uh, for the things that are um, dear to your heart, please. Our Heavenly Father, it is with joy and anticipation that we come before you knowing that you delight in hearing your people pray, and you long to answer their prayers. You've asked us to pray in your will and to pray in Jesus' name, and you've asked us to bring our requests before you and to come boldly before the throne. So, Father, we seek to do that and trust that you are pleased with our effort. Father, this virus thing is creating some division in our country again now about whether we open businesses and take away some of the restrictions. But, Father, we need to be wise as well so that we're not allowing this virus to destroy more lives. So please work and direct in each and every heart. And may this prove to be a manner in which we begin to see our nation, our world, drawn back together and to the things of our God. Let there be a spiritual awakening and a revival among the Christian. Please. Father, we ask that your comfort would continue to be directed toward the Kilborns, laying aside a grandpa. We think of the Mashikes as they've laid aside Karen's sister. We ask for the hordes that you'd be with them as this grandson, great-grandson has been killed. Um, difficult, difficult decisions to make. Please be with uh, Harry and Sandra Burke. Their son Greg was in this accident and he's banged up pretty badly. We think also of um, the Parkers and their son who has injured himself and needs some additional surgeries. And Father, it just seems to add up and add up. Speaking of the Parkers, the Gord has had some very difficult days and uh, the help coming in has been uh, necessary, but I pray that you'd grant uh, an unusual amount of strength and help uh, to Gordon, but to his dear wife, too, and family. Father, there are those throughout our church family who are facing difficult things. Uh, income has, has been cut off. Um, some of them are facing colds and maybe even a touch of just the plain old flu, influenza. And uh, there's some fear over catching this virus. But I pray that you would grant our people a real sense of comfort and peace and strength. Father, for all of those that are working to control this virus, whether it's locally here and first responders and uh, hospital personnel, health personnel, and those that are keeping the necessary businesses open, we pray that they would find a tremendous amount of, of strength and protection, please. Please. Well, Father, we have missionaries scattered around the world, and they're unable to travel, and they're unable to do a number of things. I pray that you would not only protect them, but that they would find that their needs are met, and they can rejoice in God our Father. And Father, for our military, uh, we hear of outbreak of the virus on a ship, and that's got to be a very, very difficult thing, because... There's a limit to how far apart you can get. Give wisdom to uh, the personnel that are in charge, and may they know how to deal with and treat this as well. Father, we as a church want to meet again, but I pray that even now we would become so anxious and so desirous of meeting that, that uh, one of these days when we do, it'll be a time to just rejoice. 
and to think of the goodness and mercy of our God. So direct our thoughts, direct our hearts, direct our minds, and may we find ourselves loving on each other so very much. And we pray for all these things because of and then in the name of Jesus. Amen. For our devotions this evening, I want to look at a verse that I found just interesting in my own Bible reading. It's taken from John 21. I want to deal with the third time. Now, that's going to be a reference. You'll understand it as we get into this a little bit, but let's just gather at it. John 21 and verse number 14. John 21 and verse 14. And it says this, This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Now, that's fascinating. God's word is so precise, and it's just, it's amazing. The first appearance of Jesus after the resurrection is noted in John's gospel in John 20, verses 19 to 23. At this time, Jesus showed himself to a disciple in that closed room, you'll remember, and Thomas was not present. The next time the Lord showed himself is found in John 20, verses 26 to 29. Thomas is present, and he is the one who sees the Lord's hands and his feet and, and places his hand in that side, and he cries out, My Lord and my God. In the scriptures that we are considering this evening, Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, James, John, and two other disciples uh, are together. We're not told where the others are, but that group right there is together. And it's been some time since they have seen or spoken to the Lord. So Peter makes a comment. He says, I'm going fishing. <laughs> so they all get into a boat and they fished all night long and they caught nothing, nothing. It sounds something like some of <laughs> my fishing trips. Now, morning came and they have nothing. It means that there's no breakfast to eat. Jesus, whom they did recognize, or in the past, they didn't recognize him that morning. He's standing on the shore and kind of withheld a little bit of their recognition. And um, he shouts from the shore, do you have any food? And what he was saying was, you fishermen, have you caught anything worth eating? <laughs> and they shouted back, no. Now, here things become slightly strange. Jesus said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and with that you'll find your fish <laughs> and breakfast, if he wanted to say that. They knew what he meant. Professional fishermen had gotten into a pattern for their work. Casting nets was a physically draining and uh, a, th a thing for, for them, and to interrupt that pattern was very, very unusual. Yet here, they listen to the words of a stranger at this point and what he has asked of them. And they cast the net on the opposite side of the boat, not the normal way that they fished. And the Bible says now they were not able to draw the net in because of the multitude of fish. John immediately then recognizes that the one on shore is the Lord himself, and he shouts out, it is the Lord, so that everybody on ship hears it. Now, Peter had stripped down to just his underclothes, and he quickly wraps himself, and he jumps into the water to swim to shore. This is the same fellow who asked Jesus to call him to himself while Jesus was walking on the water. Remember that? <laughs> don't, ju don't you just... Don't you just love occasionally a bold, impulsive person? Sometimes they're a real pain, but sometimes it was interesting to see what was coming next. The other disciples still had to push the push and pull the net to shore, and miraculously, the net did not break. As they reached the shore, the wording here becomes interesting. Jesus already had a fire and coals ready for cooking, and he already had fish and bread being prepared. Yet he calls out to his disciples, bring some of those fish which you have caught. In other words, we're going to add those to the meal, and we're going to make a banquet 
out of this breakfast. Wow. There's an old hymn that speaks to this. It goes like this. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ's command. For the master called unto them, come and dine. <laughs> there they found their heart's desire, bread and fish upon the fire. Thus he satisfies the hungry every time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. <laughs> you may feed at Jesus' table any time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and dine. Ah. It is said by some Bible commentators and theologians that this call to come and dine is Jesus showing that he is still providing for his own, those who had called upon him. But dear family, even in the midst of a pandemic like we're facing today, or any sorrow or pain we may find ourselves in, our Lord still provides. We're reminded of the scripture that Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19. He said, and my God, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Sorrow, pain, isolation, loneliness, pandemic, frustration, and separation from loved ones. Never shall any of these things keep our Lord from providing what we need. And it's based upon his riches in glory. Our God is rich beyond our wildest imagination, and it's all by Christ Jesus. This is the third appearance, and it proves to be an encouragement to you and to me. The situation goes on, and the Lord talks with Peter and, and so on and commissions him to go. But right here, just that, that simple little verse, this is the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was raised from the dead. Well, my dear friends, my dear loved ones, you take and please live, love, and serve the Lord. And Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday morning. And if not, it'll be here, there, or in the air. And with that, uh, we will let you go. But God bless. Spend some time in prayer. Read these scriptures for yourself. And may God bless. Thank you.